I have a deep heart to seeing agents do better in this industry. In an industry where all the raw materials of final expense, mortgage protection, Medicare Advantage, MedSup, hospital indemnity, ancillary products, annuities, everything you have with that, that license you hold, accident, sickness, and health, and the life license, will allow you to generate a six-figure income and a six-figure renewal. When I say the words, probably the best speaker in the insurance industry, do you know who's coming next, JB? Did y'all hear that? He, he, he's, he's extremely humble, knows Medicare inside and out, has been around the industry forever, and is a remarkable speaker that trains and speaks all the time, all over the country, Good buddy of mine, good friend, spoke in 2018. Welcome back 2020, Mr. Brandon Clay. Thank you, Tony. Thank you, buddy. Thank you. All right. So I want to make sure that the audio is coming through pretty clear for everybody. Everybody can hear okay. So I know you're winding down now what has been an amazing 8% Nation event. And yeah, Cody allowed me to get out to speak with him back in the Tennessee Titan Stadium. And I thought what he and Lauren and his entire 8% Nation team had put together was just absolutely extraordinary. So really excited about being able to see you guys again. But I do want to take a little bit of a temperature check in the room. And I know we've heard different versions. And, and you'll know with me there'll be a different type of energy and some things that I'll do today that probably will go a little bit different than what everybody else did. Uh, I've been very fortunate and blessed in this industry. And it's something that... Uh, I'll give you some outlines of the things that I do that allowed me, in my mind anyway, to get to have the levels of success. But if you don't mind a little bit of the energy, not the whole jump up and scream, but if you focus predominantly on final expense, mortgage protection, life insurance, and that genre, even as Brian mentioned, if you would stand just so I can see what, who focuses uh, essentially on life insurance, final expense. All right, I can actually see out pretty well here. That's great, that's great. Fantastic. If you focus mainly on Medicare Advantage and Medicare Supplement, if you'll stand up. Okay, so we've got that. And then what about, I guess I'll say financial services, annuities, and that level of marketing? Okay, I just wanted to get a temperature check, so I'm gonna do one more thing. If everybody would stand up. I did this in 2018 at the 8%. And I want to get a sense again of the room and what everybody has done. And don't take anything we're about to do to disparage or embarrass, but it's to give you both an idea of what this industry can mean and what it can do for you and what your colleagues and people around you are doing. But in any industry, I don't care if it's insurance, car sales, I don't care if it was anything that you've done in your life, if you've ever generated a six-figure income, remain standing. Now, if you've never made six figures, it's okay, have a seat. The first thing I want you to do is look around you and something I tell everybody everywhere I go, if it can be done and it is being done, why not you? So look at the room right now and I would imagine these are the eight percenters, these are the people that have survived the gauntlet of what life insurance and Medicare and all those different things and selling, eating what you kill. But, if you, but for now, if you have a six figure renewal income remain standing. If your income is six figure renewal, you're getting 8,000 or more every month coming in your mailbox from work you did previous, remain standing. First and foremost, give those people a hand. Now I'm gonna ask by their show of hands, how many of you have Medicare in your portfolio that are six figure? Take a look. Those of you that don't have Medicare in your portfolio, raise your hands. Okay, fantastic. So, what, and thank you so much. You can be seated. Thank you. So, I wanted to start out with that because I actually believe that what I'm going to show you here in the next 26 minutes and 26 seconds is going to get some of you the mentality of being in a position to generate not only a six figure linear income in the space that we all are in today the space that Cody is promoting and giving you the tools of excellence for, but it will also set the stage for you to be able to have a six-figure renewal. 
So I want to share something because I know the theme of this. That was then. This is me a little while back. Yeah, maybe you can see there. Actually, let's see. Is it on the screen there? Perfect. So when I was a kid, used to do a little bit of imitation of Michael Jackson. I used to love him as a kid. He was on the honeycomb cereal boxes. As you can see, a little bit has changed. <laughs> Knees don't do as much as they used to do. The hair went away. But my mom always used to tell me, don't cry about what left. Rejoice over what's, uh, what's gone. Rejoice over what you have left. So I took all the skills and talents that I had as a kid, and I turned that into this cottage industry for myself. 26 years specifically in the Medicare industry, about 35,000 agents trained specifically in this space, half a million enrollments that I've been involved in and responsible for, seven books published, not to impress, but then I'm an ENFJ by way of Myers-Briggs, which for those of you that might know it, that's 2% of the population, which by way of my charisma, charm, natural good looks, will let you know that I'm special. What I'm really telling you there is I'm a player's coach. I have a deep heart to seeing agents do better in this industry. In an industry where all the raw materials of final expense, mortgage protection, Medicare Advantage, MedSup, hospital indemnity, ancillary products, annuities, Everything you have with that, that license you hold, accident, sickness, and health, and the life license, will allow you to generate a six-figure income and a six-figure renewal. So I need everybody, and actually I think that formatting helped, but everybody shout change. change. So the way change happens is you've got to adapt, adopt, and evolve. Because the show must go on. So now what I want to get into is what I did in, home, in, in uh, homage to what has been created here is I've done my 8% plan. So let's get into it. So I talk to agents every week. I talk to big agencies, big FMOs, health plans, and they are saying that this is a really challenging time. It's one of contraction where things seem to be shrinking, but then it's a time of contradiction where it's actually the best time in, the, in, the, in our industry, and I've got 26 years in it, for you to be involved in this space. So what you've got to do is quit listening to the noise and be a contrarian, to go against conventional wisdom, to go against the grain. So the 8% solution, so there's two segments to it. One is sheer force of will. When I heard Cody's dad, Brian Askins, talking about the work ethic and being a debit salesman, and I know what that is. I never did it, but I've run into lots of debit people. Those are hardworking people because every week you've got to go back and get that $2.50 on that premium, and you've got to recover it. Sheer force of will is what makes that type of work possible. But sheer force of will is survival mode. It's not a matter of if you can do something. The real question is, will you? All of you have been exposed in the last two days to a lot of amazing things that could change the trajectory of your business. The question is not can you do it, but what will you do it? But then the next element is for you to develop skill. And skill is about adapt, adopt, and evolve mode. And skill means when I get really good at something, adverse conditions no longer seem adverse. Because I've elevated and adopted, evolved, and adapted to where the things that are bothering agents right now, oh, COVID is keeping me from this, or COVID is keeping me from that. The great news is, in the law of supply and demand, the demand for what we do at the level of beneficiary is at an all-time high. The 10,000 mythical people a day are turning 65, but now they're having an additional thing put on their mind that makes them more concerned about getting answers and solutions. And so the demand for what we do is risen, and by way of the carriers who provide us the solution metrics, all of those opportunities have also expanded. So the one thing we're all working with is universal, it's a commodity, but it's time. So here's what I want you to do relative to the 8% nation and the 8% solution. I want you to give yourself 8% of your time every day to develop your will, and develop your skill. That means I need, it's about two hours, I need you to give me 64 minutes a day, 56 minutes for skill development, 
And this all comes from James Clear, Atomic Habits, Charles Duhigg, The Power of Habit, uh, B.J. Fogg, Tiny Habits. And then it ultimately talks about habit stacking and habit formation. Because what I can tell you now, James Clear says, you will only rise to the level of your systems. And if your work systems and your work habits are poor, then what do you think your results are going to be? Poor. Just is. So now, we're going to take that clock, and I want you in number one, sheer force of will, we're going to use eight minutes progressively, for, and we're going to take one behavior, and then we're going to do a series of behaviors, eight minutes, eight days. But then in the, in the second round, when we're developing our skill, we're going to take eight days and one skill and use those 56 minutes to build that skill. So now, force of will. If you are going to have more success, you are going to have to claim more of your time. So I use this example. If someone is waking up at 7 o'clock, the first thing I want you to do tomorrow morning, not Monday, tomorrow, is to wake up 8 minutes earlier. 8 minutes earlier. And then I want you to digitally detox. Some of you right now are already shaking in fear because you're like, you mean to tell me I can't look at my phone, my WhatsApp, my Instagram, my YouTube, or whatever it is? For, uh, in the morning, first thing, I would tell you no. Give your mind a chance to do something else before you dive into the day that is to come. The second thing, in the second day, you're now waking up 16 minutes earlier. And then I'm asking you to hydrate before you drink coffee. Most of the body is water, but most of the brain is water. What's the first thing your brain is looking for every morning? Water. It sounds so simple, but hydrate, then coffee. Then you wake up 24 minutes earlier and simply give thanks. Gratitude sets off the series of dopamine, serotonin. It sets the stage for what you're ho hopeful for, grateful for, but to give thanks. Then... With the next eight minutes on the fourth day, you're going to review your goals. Your six month, one year, three year, five years. I work on decade long goals. I've got my life in the sense that I can plan it, earmarked for the next decade. Then I need you to plan your day. Day five, you're now waking up 40 minutes earlier, planning your day. Next day, number six, read a book. Day number seven, exercise. Now, will you exercise for eight minutes? If that's new to you, eight minutes may seem like a lot, depending on what you do. Do eight minutes of burpees and call me in the morning. That's a really tough eight minutes. But then, the last eight minutes, which now means you're waking up, instead of seven o'clock, you're waking up actually uh, at uh, six yeah, 556, so apologies for that, is positive self-talk. Now, you can talk to every guru, every millionaire, every billionaire. Their morning routines have some amount of this embedded in it. I've been doing things like this for the last 20 plus years, and I'll admit it, it was awkward at, at first, especially some of the positive self-talk based on the environment I was in and the things I was dealing with. Relative to my financials, my goals, my dreams, it didn't look like anything would happen, but I continued to do it. But now let's look at habit formation and habit stacking. So now, if you see it this way, at the end of eight days, you now have a new startup ritual. That's what Michael Hyatt calls it in Free to Focus, a startup ritual. Where in the first five minutes, you're now hydrating and giving thanks. You can do the water and you can do your thanks as you're walking. Uh, to, the, to the refrigerator. You're drinking your coffee and looking at your goals, you're planning and you're reading. Then you're exercising for 34 minutes and you're doing positive self-talk or you're listening to Inky Johnson or you're listening to people on YouTube and getting positive messages into your mind. Because the days we face as salespeople can be awfully challenging. And if you're not giving yourself it's your first chance to boot up like you would your computer, you're just going straight at the day, you're likely limiting your effectiveness and your ability to handle the tougher things. 
So now I'm going to do a quick interlude because I know there's not been a lot of product up here, but I know I've got a lot of Medicare people in the room. So I'm going to do something here for a few moments. I've been t training and teaching aides since, since about 2011 on a concept about being a six-figure senior market advisor. Being able to take what you do today, final expense, mortgage protection if you do it, Medicare Advantage, Medicare Supplement, hospital indemnity, cancer, dental vision, hearing, and annuities. And it's something Brian said earlier as well. These are niches, but they are co complementary niches. So this is something a lot of you already know, and this is just a tidbit for you Medicare agents. Because as, the more I go around the country, the more I find Medicare agents are not actually layering on something known as indemnity. So if you take this, this grid, this is like the great car will end up walking a tightrope. They pay $144.60, they've got deductibles, cost shares, they've got a lot of things going on when they get to original fee-for-service Medicare. So what do most people do? Some buy a MedSup, and I won't be talking about MedSups in this instance, not enough time. But in the case of a Medicare Advantage, it's a zero premium PPO. They can go in network, out of network, zero premium, and it's zeros all year long. That's a great plan until you begin to look at what it looks like. So it's a tale of two cities, Charles Dickens, the best of times, the worst of times. But it, so when someone's on this PPO, if they go to the doctor, it's $10 PCP, $45 specialist. My Medicare Advantage people recognize exactly what's going on here. Now, if they go to the hospital, it starts to get interesting. 285 days one through seven. If they go on an ambulance ride, it's 200. If they get cancer and need radiation treatments, it's 20%. And what does that normally mean for most people? It means on a zero premium Medicare Advantage plan that they're going to hit the maximum out of pocket, the moot, there it is. That's exactly what happens when someone's on a Medicare Advantage plan. So I'll, it's, I'll say it this way, but hear me with the right ear. If I think I've done the best thing I can possibly do by putting somebody on a zero premium Medicare Advantage plan, PPO, they can go to any physician that in or out of network with limited differential, it's all good until they start using it. That's when it starts to get interesting. And for people that are on fixed incomes, how many inpatient hospitalizations at 285 days one through seven can they afford? Do they have 10,000 moot, there it is, available? Can they pay 20% if they get cancer? So what I tell agents all over the country is the first best thing you can do as a Medicare Advantage agent is simply learn to add indemnity to a zero premium or any premium Medicare Advantage plan. So in this instance, this is a hospital indemnity plan, and I'm here today sponsored by Heartland Financial Group. I've got Nick Micheletti, uh, and Big Mike in the back that can help you with anything you need regarding indemnity. It's a great company and it's a great product. But in this instance, this couple can be covered for $110 a month, $1,320 for the full year. So what do they get for that coverage? They get hospitalization. So if they do go into the hospital, they get $300 a day for those seven days. They get $200 for the ambulance. They get $10,000 first occurrence of cancer. So all of a sudden, I've added on a zero premium Medicare Advantage plan. Feel great about that. I've then added on additionally the hospital indemnity with the cancer rider. So now let's take a look at the same couple two different ways. So the couple on the left is on the Medicare Advantage by itself. The couple on the right, same couple obviously, but now you added on the indemnity, and now look at the zeros that you see as compared to the left side. Because the hospital is now zero. Why? Because they purchased the indemnity plan. The ambulance is zero. Why? Because you added it on the hospital indemnity. The radiation, if they got cancer, it would be zero because they would receive a check for $10,000 up front. Maximum out-of-pocket is still there, but it is not as much an impact to that person. I always ask Medicare Advantage agents, are you adding indemnity to the HMOs, the PPOs, the POSs? And invariably, I get a large percentage saying, no, the Medicare Advantage covers them. It covers them. It just doesn't cover them comprehensively. 
And in the case of inpatient hospitalization with the population we serve, it is not a matter of if they go into the hospital. It is a matter of when. So what have we done when we add a Medicare Advantage plan to a hospital indemnity plan? It turns an MAPD into a baby med sup or a med sup light. Now, should we be in the position to sell plan G, plan N? I've got agents calling me about plan K, plan J. The reality is yes, we still have 24% of the population that wants a med sup. But about 33 to 43% of the population is choosing Medicare Advantage. And for my final expense agents that have never done Medicare Advantage before, the word I would put into your mind right now is get ready, get ready, get ready, because final expense is such a great lead in to, to a more Medicare Advantage. As a matter of fact, I'll do it. Final expense is the easiest to learn. No offense. Don't jump on me. Don't bum rush the stage. But it is the hardest to sell. So when I get my poor chopping door knocking warriors that are final expense agents that are learning Medicare, now the Medicare Advantage folks said, poor chopping door knocking, you can't do any of that with Medicare. No, you can. But you can poor chop and door knock with final expense. And then if I sell the policy, I can tr compliantly transition, go back in another appointment. I wasn't here today to do anything but tease the possibility that the final expense agents, of whom now I've taught thousands how to sell Medicare, all of a sudden, when, you do, when you're not standing up because you don't have a six-figure renewal, final expense agents, being very kinetic, get to that six-figure renewal faster than most agents. So I'll di I won't digress again. So it turns a Medicare Advantage plan into a baby med sub. It turns an MAPD into a DSNP of sorts, for those of you that know the language. You get the MA, you get the medical coverage, you get the PD, the pharmacy, you get the dental vision hearing, depending on plan. You get the OTC, yeah, you know me. And you get the gym, you get the picture. So, always ask agents, what kind of pie do you want? And remember Ed Harris, uh, Cuba Gooding Jr. in radio? Coach Jones, Coach Jones, they got pie. What kind of pie you want, radio? Anybody remember radio, Coach Jones? What kind of pie you want? What the kind of pie they got? They got cherry, they got apple radio. What kind you want? What did radio tell him? Both. In this room, if you are going to maximize your money, like Marshall Silver talked about, so I, I, I'm going I'm to put a preface here. I started out in this business just trying to figure out how to enter the six-figure room. 1995, an agent for United Healthcare, coming from a lot of challenges financially, been married 33 years now, but back then I literally said to her, girl, you're still good looking and young. If I were you, I'd leave. But I then found Medicare, and it didn't change my life, it saved it. And then within a year, I was in the six-figure club. And then within a decade, I'd gotten into the seven-figure range. And now I've started several businesses, three, that all have seven-figure uh, revenue. I'm now walking into environments where there are nine-figure conversations. And I'm a stone's throw away from being in a ten-figure environment where people are talking about billions of dollars. What does Brandon get to do in those rooms? I get to do the part I'm good at and take away my fair share of the spoils. I'm just simply saying to you that indigenous to the environment we're in right now is everything you need to revolutionize your business, your practice, and to make as much money as you're willing to go after. The question is, do you have the force of will to go get it? So what kind of pie do you want? He said, I want both. What kind of pie does your clients want? They want a la mode. They don't want to know that they just bought a Medicare Advantage plan that doesn't give them ice cream, that when they actually do go to the hospital, they're going to have to come up with some larger amount of money. If they have multiple hospitalizations, it could be a runaway train. So they want the pie a la mode. So I'm asking you to serve your clients at a higher level. So now I'm going to get into the last part of this, the last six minutes here. Now we've got to talk about developing skill. All I did before was set you up in a boot up environment where you create better habits that start to inertia, bring inertia to your day and momentum, but it doesn't require you to have known anything. It just requires you to do differently, wake up a little earlier and structure your day in a meaningful, intentional way. But now we're gonna talk about skill development. And I have a saying, smart skims the surface, but genius goes deep. Does anybody know what that symbol is? 
All right, it used to, oh, I heard somebody saying it. I used to give money away if somebody could tell me the first three digits. Anybody tell me the first three digits? Just the first three. Oh, come on. All right. So then, for $10, who can give me the next three digits? Okay, who was, somebody said 159. Now, I heard it up here as well. You said 159, so come, this is your $10. I'll give it to you after I'm done. So it is 159. And I heard the name back there, but I know he said it first. So I'm now, I've got a $100 bill for somebody that can give me the next number. Who said two? Right there. $100 bill. Come on up. And pass my man there. This is his. I got you. And this is yours. Good man. So now, why do I do that? And I'm going to be quick because I want to make sure I fly through the rest of this. If I have a room of 100 people and I only do one thing, there's only so many of those 100 people I can help. But if I have a little bit deeper knowledge, let's say I do FE and, and I've got a room of 100 people, I might sell 15 of those. If I add MA, I'll probably get my number up to 30. If I know MA with LIS, I can probably get my number up to 35. If I know LIS and VA, I can probably get my number up to 40. But if I know QMB, SLMB, FBD, FD, QDWI, and all of that, I'm probably now at 60, 70. The more you know, the more your income's going to grow. So quit skimming the surface. We can't, we got to go past status quo. So the first thing I'm going to ask you to do in the development of skill is E for your business. E for it. Evaluate what you're doing, evolve what isn't working right, uh, expand what does work, and when you finally find something that works and you've expanded it, scale it and explode it. The next thing is look at your core products. What are you focused on now and how are you generating revenue from those core products and how can you maximize what's already in your hand, the appointments you have, the carriers you have? Then I'm going to ask you to expand. So if you are final expense only, mortgage protection only, I need you to add lay and layer on Medicare products. They're complimentary. Trust me on that one. Then I'm going to ask you to add in indemnity uh, and then eventually annuities. I'm going to tell you to create a new niche focus. One of my best friends just saw him, says there's riches in niches. But the senior market is a niche. Some people will say, well, Brandon, I don't want to have to learn all that and get appointed and do AHIP. Okay, then you don't want no money. My mama told me, you don't want no problems, you don't want no money. The rooms I enter into now that are nine-figure, ten-figure rooms want solutions for their next level of growth. Technology. You've got to pick up technology. You've got to take what's being given to us now in this current COVID environment. Moore's Law says that, that technology doubles every 18 months. It's probably more like every six days. But technology doubles. I just invested in something known as a Microsoft Duo. Split screen. Some people hate it. Some people love it. Yeah, the, the Android systems on the Microsoft uh, chassis, old Snapdragon 865, it's a little bit clunky. But I've adopted it because I don't know where the future's going to go. And if you don't know where the future's going to go, I've got to be like radio and say both. Because in this pocket, I've got an Apple 11. You're not leaving this 55-year-old man behind. I know some of you are thinking, 55? I could have sworn he was 35. Thank you so much for clapping. I, I know you're, it looks like we're, we're kind of, you, yeah, I see. I see what you're into. So, but adopt technology. The carriers on the Medicare supplement side, Medicare Advantage side, hospital indemnity, everything can be done virtual and telephonic. Don't relegate yourself to paper. If you're doing paper, you're a dinosaur already. The carriers are giving, and the Medicare Advantage space, are giving another $50, $75, $100 for VBE, value-based enrollment, if you'll simply do the thing online. So if you've got to learn Sunfire, got to learn Connect Your, got to learn Ascend, got to learn Lean, be lean and mean and get the green. Take a look at your current clients. Take a look at your book of business. Have you called all of that book of business and said, I know these are trying times. I know you're maybe a little bit concerned. Let me tell you how what I helped you with X months ago can support you through these times. If it's life insurance, you made a great choice. You're covered. You're good. If something happens, 
If you're on a Medicare SUP or a Medicare Advantage, here's how it works if you need help. Oh, but by the way, a lot of my clients are concerned about expanded product XYZ. And then finally, new client acquisition. How are you going to find new client opportunities? I'm ama ama uh, imagining that you've heard a lot about creating new business opportunity and new models of opportunity in these last two days. How much of this are you going to invest in and give yourself the opportunity? And then finally is to elevate your brand. And I won't go into a long diatribe, but I would highly recommend everyone here talk to Landon McCarter. I'm an old schooler. I've been around a long time. Yes, I know a lot of people in the industry. I'm very, it's a long story. I won't get into the depth of it. I've got 28 seconds. But Landon took a look at my brand. He was the first person I ever engaged to look at me as a brand. I learned more with him in three weeks than I had doing something for 30 plus years. Give those guys a shot. Yep. So closing out here, this is what you're going to do for sheer force of will. You're going to re-engineer your boot up. You're going to start your day differently. And then additionally, you're going to spend 56 minutes a day, eight days, developing the skills you need so that the next time I come here on this stage and ask you to remain standing when you're earning six-figure renewals, you will be able loud and proud to say, I'm the one. Thank you so much for your time, 8% Nation. Continue blessings and success. Thank you, Cody and Lauren. You guys are amazing. Hey, if you enjoyed this, I got another one you're going to love. It's right there. Click on it. See you in there. I am putting in the hot seat today my good buddy, Mr. Jeremy Whitaker. Dude, what's up, man? What's up? Dude, as you guys jump into this and watch this, stay with me. This cat did a quarter of a million dollars in his first six months. 